wanted to be someone to book shows. I wanted to be someone to bring in bands. I wanted to be someone to pay bands. I wanted to be someone to get bands shows out of state. I wanted to help produce more BS records. I wanted to help Abominog write new lyrics. I wanted to make sure they had money to get there. I wanted the flyers to be seen. You know, you look back and some of these clubs, they took chances on us. You know, we know clubs are all about making a dollar. If they could have a guy to come in there and fucking, you know, dance nude with snakes and make them a million dollars, then that's all they would do. I look at the death metal scene in the 1990s uh, in DC kind of like uh, how American graffiti is. How, you know, people of that, that era identify with American graffiti and, you know, this kind of symbolizes what the 50s or wh whatever the hell it was uh, for, for those people. For me, the 90s death metal scene was that, that's the era I grew up in. You know, underground metal shows were really, they were not like, you know, what was like socially accepted. More people were into the death metal scene. You would get more of a crowd, there was more of a unity, you know? People might think of what we did back then as less extreme compared to now, but back then, it's all perspective. Back then, you didn't have that. And it was just an excuse to get together and with people and get high, and I don't even think we were really thinking about playing. We just wanted the party. Oh, back then, dude, everything was new and every idea was, was fresh, you know? People always said, yeah, you know, I like the music, but I don't like the vocals. What do you do? I do vocals. And I just, you know, gradually got sucked in to a scene which I really was on earth to live for. In the early 90s, it was my life. I mean, we played all the time. We were practicing all the time. We were, it, it was everything to me.